I literally have no idea what made me think that I had enough skill at that time to make that maneuver. Welcome to the Knit Weekend YouTube channel. I'm Haley and I am joining you from a very dreary day in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, we're just going to embrace that coziness. I've got a candle going. I set up some atmospheric lighting for you and hopefully it's not going to detract from the episode and your enjoyment of the knitting content. Speaking of knitting content, this podcast is just a place for me to come and nerd out with you about all things knitting, patterns, and yarn. I love to explore new designers, new yarns, and um, if you're up for that journey, then I hope you'll sit down, spend a little time. Um, if you like it, hit the subscribe button. Speaking of subscribers, um, it's been maybe three weeks since the last uh, kind of full length episode upload. And at the end of that episode, I said that I had a year end goal to cross 2000 subscribers. This was completely arbitrary. There is nothing that I get for having 2000 subscribers. I just really like round numbers. And there's something that feels like a milestone when you cross that next one. Well, I um, woke up to a whole slew of new followers one morning and my friend Mia messaged me and then said, Hey, have you watched the knitting posse? And I thought, well, yes, I just discovered them, but I hadn't watched the new episode yet. And it turns out that Kim had given me a lovely shout out at the end of that episode. So I think many of you probably found me through her, um, kind of recommendation. And first Kim, if you're watching this, thank you so much. Don't worry, by the way, the pixie cut's coming back. I'm just in between haircuts, so you're getting like the swoop today instead of the pixie bang. But um, but anyway, back to the knitting. Uh, Kim just kind of said that not only did I have a cute pixie haircut, but that we had similar taste in, um, in knits. So that um, clearly sent a lot of you my way, and I'm super grateful for you all taking the time to watch over the past few weeks and hit that subscribe button. It just means the world to me also means a lot to the people in my everyday life, my husband, my family, because it means that I can engage more with you all about this nerdy stuff instead of boring them and watching their eyes glaze over. Um, I'm mostly kidding, they're all very supportive. It's very sweet. In fact, you'll probably um, see some comments from some of my family members because they have started to kind of chime in at the <laughs> in the comment section of the episodes, which I love. Um, so if you see anybody saying hi, sweetie, or love you, that's probably, <laughs> probably somebody in my family. Um, I did pretty early on in this podcast that I had completely forgotten about until last week was I showed my Instagram saves. So before I um, move into gift knits, which I am burying at the end of the episode, let's do some Instagram saves so that I can show you, um, what I've had my eye on. Okay. Um, the first one that I want to share with you is the main sweater by Clarissa Shellong. Um, I have been plagued by a sweater's quantity worth of pack of wool that I purchased from the Echo View Fiber Mill closing sale. I have not been able to find anything that is right for that yarn that I want to knit. So I think this main sweater Maybe it. Keep your fingers crossed. If the gauge works out properly when she publishes it, because I think it's still in testing, then I think this is going to be the pattern for that yarn. And I could not be more excited about that. She also, as an aside, has a vest version with some toggles. That's very cute. Just not something that I would picture myself wearing. All right. My next Instagram save is this cable sweater from the Knit Pearl Girl. She's calling it the Sea View. Um, I think it is still being written. What uh, Sophie said about this one that she's not necessarily the biggest fan of uh, knitting cables, so she wanted to put a pattern out for non-cable knitters who want a cable sweater. Um, so I think this one is very cute. She's knit this in um, Jensen and mohair held together from Isair, which I love. 
I think the lines on this one are great. It's just very classic. Okay, and um, the next one we're gonna bundle. I am obsessed with the new quilt inspired designs from Amy Christopher's Savory Knitting. Um, this sweater, the Mesa, Mesa sweater, I have yarn in stash um, that I'm swatching for because I'm pretty sure this one is gonna be perfect for it. And then how cute is this shawl that I cannot remember the name of, but it's kind of like the Pressed Flowers 2.0, but quilt inspired. I love both of those. Um, so a few Instagram saves for you so that we can get back into that pattern exploration that we did early on in the podcast. I can't believe you guys let me forget about that because I always have fun doing that. Well, this episode is going to be pretty whip heavy. I only have one finished object to share with you and it's a small one. Um, so that's how the knitting goes sometimes, but let's start with what I'm wearing. Um, because this is going to provide some context for you on why I only have one finished object. I am wearing my tulip sweater. Let me see if I can stand up for you to see without knocking everything over or at least just prop myself up. No, that's not going to work. That didn't work. Hold on. Okay. This is very awkward angling, but I think the magic of this sweater is the hem. So just take a peek and then I'll come sit back down. It'll be super interesting to see how I edit that little piece, won't it? Um, all right, so this is my tulip sweater. This is by Melody Hoffman, uh, B Mandarins or Mandarines. And um, a few details on this. This is one of my very early knits. It is knit um, in Plotilope held double. So it is a wooly, wooly knit. It is a pretty dense fabric. I think I used maybe a 4.5 millimeter needle on this. So it is one of the um, kind of denser, warmer fabrics that I have. I wanted to wear this sweater today because the theme of this episode really is probably going to be frogging. I have done so much frog in the past two or three weeks. I think I have frogged as much as I have knit, which is why only one small finished object. But this sweater in particular is the most painful frog I have ever had in my time knitting. Um, I think if you've been knitting for any length of time, we've all had that really painful frog that broke us. Um, and the good news is after that most painful frog, everything else just seems kind of like small potatoes. Um, but it does really stink in that moment. So the story on this um, and, and my most, why it was my most painful frog was because I was just really learning how to, or had not really learned how to control tension in my cast on and bind off edges. And um, I cast on on a larger needle size um, than I was knitting the rib on because I thought, well, that's gonna just make it not like cinch in so much. So I cast on a larger needle size, then I went down a needle size to go into the rib, and then um, went to the needle size for the body. Got all the way to the bottom of the sweater to do this lovely scallop hem, which you have to be really careful on your bind off there as well. Um, the only way to get the scallops to lay flat is to do just a very, very loose bind off. You have to be very cautious about your tension there. So I think that hem probably took me, I don't know, three or four tries to, to be able to bind it off with the correct tension. Again, very early knit for me. And I get to the bottom of the body and I look back at the neckline and I am just still not satisfied with it. I knew, I knew it was wishful knitting. I knew the entire time I was knitting on it that I was not going to be happy with the neckline at all. Kept on knitting, powered through. And I thought to myself, Haley, it's fine. You can just cut the neckline out and re-knit it. 
I literally have no idea what made me think that I had enough skill at that time to make that maneuver. It is knit top down. If you have ever taken a collar off of a top down knit, you will know what a nightmare this is. Don't do it. Don't just do not do it. If you are not satisfied with your cast on or your collar on a top down knit, stop <laughs> and frog it at the beginning. I didn't, I decided to go for it. The problem is this goes directly from the rib into short rows. There is not a single row of plain stockinette. Um, so I cut into my short rows and the whole section unraveled. I just felt like at that point there was nothing that I could do to, to, to fix that with my skill set at the time. I still don't know if I could figure out how to like fix an issue if I, in that type of like short row mess that I had going on here. So it was a total frog. It was three weeks of work and a total frog. And I just remember sitting at the coffee table, just boo-hooing as I ripped everything out. The good news is I had double the amount of yarn that I needed because I did not understand how to order plates of plodulopi. Turned out to be a blessing because I ended up being able to re-knit the sweater um, without any issue and without even having to use the frogged yarn. If you have ever frogged plotilope, you know what a nightmare that is. So um, I kind of just put that yarn aside and went, okay, that is what it is. So as far as this sweater goes, things that I love about this sweater, I love the overall fit. Um, doesn't have too much positive ease. I did lengthen the body um, because if you knit it exactly to pattern, it is super cropped. I think really designed to be worn over dresses more so than with pants. Um, so I did add, I don't know how much, but at least a couple inches to the body. I knit the sleeves exactly to pattern. Um, I was super impressed with myself. I think this is the first knit that I ever got gauge like on point. So the fit is spectacular. Um, I love the yarn. I can tolerate rustic yarns. Uh, obviously, I'm actually wearing this with just a camisole underneath. And that's because the one thing that I do not like about this sweater is the neckline. I still don't like this neckline. First of all, this is my first time working short rows. So you do see this dip here in the neckline, but also with it being a square neckline, it is very hard to layer. You cannot wear a crew neck under this and you can't really even wear a V-neck uh, because it, come, if, you know, it comes here. So I have, you know, just a little camisole under it and that's, it's either that or, you know, sometimes I'll pair it with a turtleneck or a white button down if I'm gonna wear it to work. But it's definitely, a um, woolly sweater, but with the neck being so open, it's not my go-to in the dead of winter. Um, so I kind of reserved this one more for late fall, early spring. I do wear it with a scarf from time to time, but it's just not the same. I really like my neck being more covered. So if you were at all you know, concerned about the back of your neck being cold, what I would tell you to do is find a similar crew neck sweater with a similar size, similar gauge, and then just uh, use the hem um, from the bottom. And then you might be a bit happier with that. So that's my tulip sweater, very early knit, very painful knit, um, but definitely sets the theme for today of frogging. Before we get to the frogging, I'll show you my finished object. I have only just the one. And um, actually, this is a rare test knit for me. Um, if you've been around here for any length of time, you may have noticed that I never talk about test knits. It's because I kind of gave them up a couple years ago. I just um, found that knitting with the time pressure was causing me a huge amount of stress, and that's not what this hobby is about for me. So I put that aside um, until life could calm down a little bit. I do enjoy the process of test knitting. I love the community. I love um, being able to offer the feedback to the designer and being able to kind of troubleshoot language. I'm a big language person. 
I'm always the person that people come to to edit their emails before they hit send, especially the angry emails when I say don't send that. Um, but anyway, so I do enjoy test knitting. I just, um, yeah, haven't really had the time or mental space to do that because it is a commitment that you are making to the designer and it's important that you follow through. Um, but this is a short test knit, just two weeks, and that's because it's a pair of mittens. Um, these are the Crossroads Mittens um, by Trine Ani. I do not know if this is how you pronounce this, but here's the, here's the design here. They are scheduled, I think, at this point to be released on December 1st. I will show you the stitch pattern up close because it is very cool. And we're going to hope, I have one row that went bad. We're going to hope that that's not on this mitten. If it is, then just ignore it. I don't think that focused at all. Okay, we're gonna insert a photo because this is apparently not gonna focus um, so that you can see these lovely mittens. So I knit these um, in a Lobby NMA Cory worsted that I had left over from a sweater. Um, I had just a ton of smaller kind of quantities and scraps. So I thought this is the perfect project to be able to knit that up. Um, these are so soft and they just, I forgot how luxurious this yarn feels. Ooh, I've got an end poking out. Okay, we'll fix him in a minute. I forgot how luxurious this yarn feels. So a little about this pattern. Um, I test knit the pattern in the DK size two um, based on my hand measurements, which I do have pretty small hands. Um, and this pattern though is kind of a tour de force because she has the gauge for fingering, DK, and worsted all in the same pattern. She's releasing it I think on December 1st, which I'm really glad for you because that means that you will have the opportunity to be able to get the pattern before the holidays if you want to do a gift knit. I think each mitten took me about two days uh, to knit in the DK weight. So if you were going to knit it in the worsted weight, it would just really fly by. Um, it has a very cute slip stitch pattern um, that even I think a relative beginner knitter would have no issues knitting. Um, I used to be super afraid of thumbs and um, I have to say that they are not as bad as I imagined that they would be. So if you are hesitant to knit mittens because of thumbs, don't be, go for it. They make excellent gift knits because they go so fast. In two days a mitten, you'll be fine. You can get it done in under a week, it's amazing. Um, I still am not always satisfied with the pickup on my thumbs. I tend to have the, the holes and the gaps even when I follow the instructions. So I just graft those and move on with it. Um, but yeah, so super pleased with how these mittens turned out. Um, my husband actually said that he would like a pair. He thought it was a very cool stitch pattern. So we'll see, that may be coming in the future as well. Um, so I hope that you will check that pattern out once she releases it. Those are the Crossroads mittens. Let's see. Like I said, only, oh, that's not actually the only finished object. I do have another finished object. It's going to come later at the end of the episode. After we kick my family members off the episode then, um, who are probably watching, um, then I will go into gift knits. But um, just to kind of tease it a little bit because I'm really excited to share this with you. My finished object is from this book. Uh, this is Seasonless. It's Patterns for Life. Um, it is Amira Sue and Karen Templer. And um, this book, if you all aren't familiar with it, brilliant. Everything is written in worsted weight yarn. They, they give you several yarn recommendations in the book. Um, and you've got your basic patterns for a cardigan, a pullover, a hat, um, fingerless mittens, and a vest. And then you have interchangeable design elements. So one's a texture element, you've got stripes, you've got mosaic. Um, it is a very, very cool book. And I've already knit one gift item from this book and I have another planned um, to knit. 
My husband also commented when he was looking at one of the sweater patterns that he thinks that that would be a cool sweater. So he may end up getting a sweater out of this book as well. I actually bought it for this cardigan. I oh, just love this. It is knit in Mungo um, from Retrosaria Pomar and our, yes, 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 yes. Anyway, um, and I just think this would be such a great summer lake cardigan, either in the, you know, yellow and white or a navy and uh, white would be amazing. So, um, more on that book later, just wanted to kind of tease it now to give you incentive to stick around so that you can see the finished object from that book. But for now, I guess, let's move on to whips. Um, first, we will talk about my sweater knit, um, sweater, sweater knit, sweater whip. This sweater I had hoped to have done for you, but we did not get there. We did not get there because we spent a lot of time frogging, a lot. Um, let me start with the yarn. This is some of my Wool and Folk purchase. Um, this is the Dream Base from Artville Yarn. And um, this yarn is a, and I don't know why I always, I need to learn not to try to do that because it blows out the color for you. So anyway, this is a DK weight um, Surrey alpaca. So it's, um, I think it's Surrey alpaca and merino, maybe some silk in there, but it is the most luxurious soft yarn. Um, it is hand dyed and I'm not really somebody who works a lot with hand dyed yarns. Um, to be perfectly frank with you, I don't have the patience for it. <laughs> I love a good commercially dyed yarn that I can just start knitting and carry on. Um, but I decided to kind of go for it since I was there and it just felt like in the spirit of the event that I should try out a hand dyed yarn. So that's what I've done. I chose a tonal instead of a highly variegated. Um, in hindsight, I wonder if a tonal, and you can tell me if you're somebody who uses a lot of hand dyed yarns, but I wonder if a tonal is actually a little more difficult to work with at times than a highly variegated yarn. And I say this, you'll see why I'm wondering this. Um, I'm wondering this because as I was knitting this up, I really couldn't see the color variation at all, um, row by row. Where I could see it was when I joined it in the, you know, joined it under the arms and went to the bathroom to do my try on and I was like, Oh, <laughs> whoa. So <laughs> the good news is I have been reassured by my family um, and my husband that as a non-knitter, you look at this and go, oh, that's really cool. Even if as a knitter, you look at it and go, ooh, she did not do good yarn management there. So um, this is the sweater that I have been working on. I am actually not going to share the name and designer of this sweater. Here's why. Um, the pattern is not size inclusive. It has a very limited size range. And um, I did reach out to the designer. I did ask her if she planned to release it in a larger size range. She is a French designer and it has only fairly recently that she's been translating into English. So, you know, I just kind of said, if you're gonna release it in English, I think some more sizes would be really beneficial. She did respond back very quickly and said that um, she does have larger sizes in testing currently or more sizes in testing currently. So if and when those sizes get updated and the pattern is re-released, then I will, if I'm aware of it, circle back and give you more details about the actual pattern name. Um, in the meantime, there is this lovely pattern uh, by uh, Hiroshi Midori. Midori, Hiroshi. Mm. You're on my phone and the pattern is on my phone. Anyway, this pattern that I will put the name of down in um, the details in the show notes. 
that gives a very similar vibe with the kind of yarn over yoke pattern. So I would encourage you to look at this one, much more inclusive size range. As you know, with many of her patterns, it can easily be knit in, you know, a fluffy yarn as opposed to this woolly yarn that she has here. So give that one a check or a, give that one a once over if you want something with this vibe. So this was designed really to be my holiday sweater. I thought I wanted something that was just really luxurious for the holidays, very fluffy, kind of special. And um, what, what happened here was, <laughs> <laughs> what happened here was that I did not employ helical knitting in this section. Um, actually, I may not have used it here either. That is because I really just kind of got tripped up with how I would do helical knitting in conjunction with the yarn over um, pattern that we have. So you can definitely tell that this section is different from this section. Though the good news is it cuts right at the end of the yoke. So I started the helical knitting right here. So I feel like it kind of looks somewhat intentional. At least that's what my family has reassured me. And I'm just gonna roll with it. Um, you know, embrace the imperfections of hand dyed yarn. So I chose not to frog that. Where I did start frogging was just after I finished the yarn over pattern um, on the yoke because I had forgotten that I wanted to go back in and add short rows um, to kind of bring the back up a little bit. I'm not sure if you watch um, Me Knits, Amy. She had the same, um, she did this with her Whitmore cardigan. I think it's, I think it was her Whitmore cardigan. The pattern did not include short rows and she decided to add it in um, and I thought that's a really brilliant idea. I do prefer a garment with short rows, so I'm going to do the same thing. I connected it, um, under the arms, completely forgot that I had wanted to add the short rows, got about an inch in and had to rip it back out so that I could go in and add the short rows, which I've done before joining, um, under the arms. So that was frog number one on this. Actually, I think that was not frog number one. That might've been frog number two. There is an error in um, one of the rows of the English translation. So I really got off on that and my kind of row ended up being sideways. As I mentioned when I was working on the ranunculus, I have a really hard time aligning yarn over eyelids. I don't know why, it's just in a circular yoke, yarn over eyelids, it is really hard for me. So I'm confident there were at least a few more frogs in this section. Um, and so after I got through the yoke and I continued on into the body, then I went over to the sleeves. Well, this sleeve was frogged not once, but twice. Um, the first time I just decided that it was too big of a balloon because um, the way the design is written, the sleeve increases quite dramatically. She actually increases along the sleeve and then decreases um, to go into the cuff. So I decided that was going to be too dramatic of an increase um, and I, opted out of that. I did do some increases, but just not to the rate that she did. So that was frog number one. Frog number two was when I realized that those increases in my head that I thought she was increasing all those times were actually only a couple increases followed by a couple decreases. So I had then ended up with, I think, 20 stitches more than I was meant to have by the time I got to the cup. So that was my misread. Um, and I just decided that I didn't have the patience to go back in and I just wanted to knit plain stockinette in the round, get the sleeve done. So that's what I've done. I frogged it back. I opted out of the sleeve as the pattern wrote it. And instead I actually used the sleeve from the ranunculus. That was also inspired by my friend Mia. I'm gonna talk about Mia a lot this episode, I guess. Um, when we had dinner when we were in New York, I said something about not feeling confident with 
balloon sleeves because of my petite nature and short arms. And she raised up her arm. She was wearing her lovely winter ranunculus. And she said, but look how great this sleeve is. And um, it was super cute. So I have taken the sleeve, um, including the angled cuff from the ranunculus and used it on this sweater. So I figure I'm probably about two weeks maybe a week and a half behind where I should be on this sweater. I should be done by now, but I am not. I lack about two centimeters on the body before I then put the rib on, um, which will just be a one by one rib at the bottom. So that's the story of all the frogging, all the mishaps. My knitting has not been flowing very well these past few weeks. That is, um, mostly my fault and um, I'm just going to take it as a learning experience and carry on. So, um, Okay, I think it is time for anybody who knows me in real life that may receive a gift from me to say goodbye and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. All right, now that they're all gone, we can get into the gift knits. Uh, I have a few for you this week, and um, these are all knits that you would totally have time to work up between now and the holidays. We've got two in progress, one finished. Um, so first we'll just maybe, since I already mentioned the book, Seasonless. This one. Um, we can, I'll show you what I am working on. Let's see if I can find it. You know what? I, I don't need to show you in the book. This is my version of it. Um, so this is the, this is a cap. It's a mosaic, um, band and I have not wet blocked this yet. I've just done a quick steam block so that I could show it to you and you'd actually be able to see the stitches a little bit differently. Um, one of the things for gift knits that I am really enjoying is trying out different patterns, but also different yarns that I've had in stash. So all of my gift knits that I'm giving this year are going to be made with yarns from stash. I have a problem of hoarding single skeins just to try them out and um, then never actually putting them to use. So this one, you may recognize this gray pink um, here. This is the moda that I talked about in the last episode with the gift knit. Um, my friend Mia, <laughs> you could make like a drinking game at this point. <laughs> Take a drink every time I say her name in this episode. Um, we're just gonna, yeah, we're just, oh, I'm such a nerd. Anyway, um, she pointed out to me that the moda is, while it's said, it, while it's a DK, because it is woolen spun, it knits up more like a worsted. So, Seasonless, made for only worsted patterns, and I decided, okay, let's give the Moda another go, this time at a worsted uh, gauge. And so that's what I have done. And I have to say I like it much more um, at a worsted gauge than trying to knit it at a DK gauge. So that's definitely a big difference. Um, I have paired it with um, a local yarn, actually. This is Atlas from Modern Daily Knitting. Um, this is their house brand, and I picked this up at their summer open house. So I just bought the one skein because honestly it is a little on the pricier side of what I typically buy, and I didn't have anything in mind to knit with it. I just kind of wanted to see how it would behave. This yarn is 100% um, Ram Brulee. Ram Brulee. You all know pronunciation hard for me. Um, but it has so much bounce in this yarn. It is just crazy. I mean, yeah, it's, it's almost, let's see if you can tell. It's so light and airy. Um, it's almost gauzy to, to some extent, I guess I would say. And, um, I just got it in the natural color way. So I have that paired with my pink Moda and um, this cute little beanie. I knit this, you guys, in one day. I'm not a fastener, now granted, it was a lazy day. 
I just cleaned in the morning and then knit all afternoon. Um, but one day to knit this. I think the brim is a little short. The pattern, rec I knitted it to the um, recommended length. Um, I probably would have added a little bit more. If I get ambitious, I may go back in, take the brim off and re-knit it um, to add a little more length to it. But overall, I love this. I think this mosaic is so cute. Um, the decreases, I've never done a decrease on a beanie like this. It actually had, I think seven points of decreases. Most of the time when I've done beanies, I either just see it written as, you know, a whole bunch of knit two together rounds at the top um, or a kind of four part decrease. But this one actually had seven. So it's got, it's got a little bit of a kind of funkiness when it lays flat, but I think it'll look really nice on the head. This is the cap. There's two options of beanie and a cap and I've knit the cap. Um, that's just based on yarn consumption. So love this, definitely going to knit this up. I'm going to um, knit another one plain without the color work, a cap with a big chunky folded brim on it. Um, and I think that's gonna be super cute. And that's gonna be marled uh, with a black and a blue yarn from, the, from my stash that I haven't had a chance to use yet. So that is the finished gift knit. Um, I may even give it enough time probably frog the waffle beanie in the moda that I showed you on the last episode and knit a similar one um, for another person from this. So the next um, gift knit is still a work in progress because I cannot decide what color to do the fingers of these mittens. Um, these are just some pretty basic let lope mittens. Um, Let Lopi is my favorite for anything that's going to get a lot of wear and tear. I love Let Lopi socks. I love Let Lopi mittens. They are, they, you can probably tell right now, they're still very stiff. Um, how I manage that is when I block Let Lopi, I actually soak it um, for several hours and I block it in lukewarm water. And that really just helps it kind of open up a bit and become much softer and then it continues to soften with wear. Um, so with that yarn, blocking is an absolute must. This pattern um, is another pattern that I test knit, I guess a year ago now. Um, and this was from the Feyrock. Ooh, I should, hmm, I'm a bad podcaster. I did not double check the name of this mitten. I will put it down in the show details. Here is what it looks like as it is written to pattern, or if you knit it to pattern, which I have not. I have used the framework for the mittens. I've omitted the color work and added my chunky stripes um, instead. The color work is darling. I've knit several pairs with the color work and um, really love those, but it's also just a great basic mitten pattern using my favorite, you know, yarn for mittens. So and my final gift knit is a very basic two by two rib beanie. I think it is actually called the two by two, um, possibly a free pattern on Ravelry. I will put the designer name in the comments below. And um, this is, yeah, just a, it's gonna be a basic two by two beanie. I have knit this one other time. I like the decreases of the crown on this. It has a four point decrease um, and I think it looks really tidy and very neat. Um, and so that's what I'll be knitting. This was by request um, from my nephew and he wanted a black yarn. Now I don't have a black yarn in stash, but this is pretty darn close. So I'm calling it black. Um, and this is the Rama Mitu. I believe it is, they've got a couple that are the same base, 50% wool, 50% alpaca, and this is the DK weight. My husband actually brought this back from Norway because it is what he wanted for a beanie, which I have already knit and gifted to him. So I am using the leftovers to knit up this two by two rib beanie. I have to be honest with you, I am not a big fan of knitting ribbed 
beanies, one by one or two by two. I'm an English style knitter and it just causes my hands to kind of cramp up quite a bit. So I am just kind of knitting on this an inch or so at a time. And um, I think we're about six inches in and I need to have eight inches before I can start the, um, the crown decreases. So we are, well, actually probably more like five inches looking at this. Um, so we are getting there. This is the one knit that I have to have finished by Christmas. My nephew is, shall we say, discerning instead of picky, put a polite spin on it. Um, so the fact that he has requested a beanie for Christmas really means a lot and I need to fulfill that wish if I fulfill no others. Um, so that is the final gift knit that I have to share with you. Um, I have maybe one or two other gifts that I need to complete. Um, not putting the pressure on myself if I get them done, um, which I think I will. I think, I think I've got plenty of time. It is just the Sunday after Thanksgiving, so I'm making pretty steady progress and I feel good about it. Where I will get sidetracked is I do have a um, planned cast on with some friends for a shawl project. And um, that one has the potential to send me sideways when it comes to getting gift knits done because I have a feeling that one is gonna be a little addictive and then that's what I'm really gonna work, want to work on. One of the things that I've not been super good about on this channel is sharing what podcasts I'm watching. And I wanna do that this week because there are three podcasts, um, three podcasts that I've really been enjoying, two of which are very new, only with an episode or two out. And um, one that is really pushing hard toward a thousand subscribers. And I think they deserve to hit that milestone as well. So uh, the first uh, podcast that I will share with you is Two Pearls in a Pod. These ladies are from Australia. They are such a joy. I have really enjoyed watching them. They have really fun banter. Um, as somebody who just sits here and talks to myself, um, I really enjoy watching their banter. They are pushing hard to get to a thousand subscribers. I hope they have already done that by the time that I am releasing this episode, but um, check them out. I think you'll enjoy them as well. The second podcast that I want to share with you is actually a friend of mine. I think I can call her a friend. Sherelle, can I call you a friend? I feel like I can. Um, <laughs> we had a fabulous knitting day in Louisville, uh, last year. We met halfway. She's based out of Cincinnati. I'm in Nashville and, um, Sherelle and a couple other knitting friends. We all met in Louisville and just had a day of knitting. So her podcast is Wooly Locks. I think that, is, I hope that's her podcast name. That's awful. Um, hold on. Yes. Okay. I wanted to just make sure because that is her Instagram handle. Um, and I wanted to make sure that it was her podcast as well. Uh, so Sherelle is just one of the most joyful people. And I think that translates really well, um, through her Instagram account and I'm sure it will translate in her podcast as well. She only has one short episode out there, but trust me, you're going to love her. Go hit that subscribe button. And the third one is another new podcast. Um, this one only has two videos out. It is the In Her Skein podcast. Um, and she is a Canadian knitter who is now living in Italy and um, kind of just started her podcast to document this moment of transformation in her life. And she has two episodes out. I have really enjoyed them. So three podcasts for you all to go watch between now and the next time we're together. And um, I hope you will let me know what you think of those recommendations. I think you'll find them enjoyable. I think it's just time to sign off. I think I've done as much awkward damage as I can do stumbling through the last piece of this. And it's just time to say, thanks so much for spending time with me and I'll see you next time.